Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to build this oak headboard. getting at these holes with a screwdriver to knock any loose crap out of here. All right, so I took my welding brush over here because that has stiffer bristles on it for getting rid of some of this stuff uh, closer to the surface. It's somewhat rock and really loosening it up. This is starting to look like a patchwork of green band-aids on here. This is the backside and uh, covering up everything where there might be potential leakage. I think there's a little bit of leakage, but not too disastrous. All right, now I'll start pouring in some of these holes here. Essentially, what I've done is I have some aluminum channel, I have some aluminum angle iron, a bunch of clamps to clamp things together, and that's the way we're going to roll here. Just so I guess it demonstrates that you don't have to be terribly fancy to do this. The thing. <laughs> So here's where I'm at. I've just flattened out the slab with my ordinary man jig here, and now I'm kind of ready to re-pour some epoxy in places where things are rotten. So, for example, down in here, okay, there's a lot of rotten areas, and that needs to be filled in again. So you might ask, well, why didn't I, um, you know, flatten it out first and then go ahead and pour the epoxy in it and then do this final little 
flattened. And I suppose I could have done that, except that there was considerable warpage on this end over here, where uh, the crack is, this piece versus that piece, was quite a bit different. And so I wanted to hold all that in place with the mechanism that I had to clamp it together, put the epoxy in, get it stabilized, and then do that initial flattening. So yeah, I'm kind of having to do some epoxy work again, but the second time is not really gonna be that big of a deal, and everything's pretty much flat. I'm gonna leave it right in the jig here, and I'll let the epoxy set, and then I'll go over it with the same jig, just tweak this down like uh, 30 second of an inch, uh, 16 whatever is necessary, and skim off a little bit, and that way I won't be getting down to rotten material really. So I, I want to show wood, I don't want to have an epoxy finish, but um, I do want epoxy to stabilize these areas for sure. So I'm going to go in there with a a brush and kind of work this to get any loose crap out of here. This is by far the worst spot right here. especially when it gets a little bit of finish on there. It's really gonna pop, I think. Point the holes are in, and I'm going to trim off a half inch. What do you think? Is this a shame? I'm about ready to cut a crowbar into four pieces. This is a case where sometimes you can buy an object cheaper than you could go and buy this hexagonal rod. And so there we go. This crowbar was probably like eight bucks at a fleet farm.
All right, as you can see, this is a clamp intensive thing right here. I am basically just going to weld this U channel onto this square tubing right here. And so I've got it all clamped in place. I have some popsicle sticks underneath here on one side for shims so that it won't be too tight after I get done welding. A little tacky tacky here and a little tacky tacky there. The reason for rounding that off is because the inside of this angle iron, which makes up the channel, has a little bit of a radius to it. Something like this seems like there's really no substitute for hand sanding. I use my orbital sander along here a little bit, but really when it comes down to it and getting all the last lines out, I don't know. Hand sanding seems to be the trick. So here I am. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, now is the moment that I've been waiting for for a long time, and that is to start actually putting some finish on these two live edge slabs. I'm starting out on the back side, you know, because, well, I'm just not brave enough to start out on the front side, but that needs to be finished too, even though it's not going to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. All the bad spots and anomalies and whatever are on the back side. I don't care. I'm never going to look at it, and it's only me and my wife that are sleeping on this bed in front of this thing, so I just care about the side that I see. But I did sand it all to nice, uh, smooth 220 grit, and so it feels good. It just, you know, there's things about it that don't look perfect. So that is what it is. I am going to start putting boiled linseed oil on this, and let's see what it looks like. No joke. <clears throat> that is gorgeous right there, even if that is the backside. Wipe on, wipe off, they say. Here we go. And wipe off. off the excess because it's been a few minutes. And I actually took quite a bit of time off camera to really work that oil and see all the lines. Side because I don't know if you can see on the camera but there's spots in here that are blotchy that didn't really take yeah this is the first time and I'm gonna have to learn something about this I'm gonna try some of this here on it brake parts cleaner Let's get 
that does. That might actually be the trick. That's better. I like that much better. I'm using some steel wool to finish up the cleaning process here. <laughs> 